How you guys doing? This is Dale from MDMD Reviews, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Logitech Blue Yeti USB microphone. Here we are, the famous Logitech Blue Yeti. I know over the years I've taken um, shots at this microphone, and I said to myself, let me get one because I want to see what the big fuss is about. Anytime I use condenser microphones, I always like to keep the volume low and I have it close to me. I think it's like about the same with any kind of microphone, but I do that so I don't have to, I don't have to talk louder um, and have the gain up higher. That's just, whenever I use condenser microphones, I'm much more cognizant to, not to like purposefully speak loud or make sure my volume isn't loud and I keep the gain low so that it doesn't pick up any background, well, I keep the game low and keep the mic close to me so it doesn't pick up any background noises. And I've said that on the previous videos as well, um, as I, when I reviewed other microphones. But I wanted to get my hands on a Blue Yeti, and so you guys can see right, right here. It is a Blue Yeti. I, um, I got it off of eBay for like 30, 32 bucks. I think it retails at uh, 129. Um, I saw a couple on eBay, and if you've been familiar with my channel, like I said before previously on one of my other channels, um, I'm the kind of person because me and my wife we are into retail, um, meaning that we we, we will buy items for cheap where we sell it. So nine times out of ten, I'll buy something, and if I don't like it, I'll just I'll just sell it anyway. So, um, but I wanted to kind of just kind of give my first of all impression. Now, one of the things that did kind of like surprise me um, when I actually looked into the specs of the Blue Yeti was, oh my God, this thing is heavy. <laughs> I'm holding it with, my, with like one hand and my hands started to get tired. <laughs> this is heavy. It's heavy. I don't even think I could put it on a, um, I, don't, I don't even think I could put it on one of my boom arms because most of my microphones, um, my, my dynamic microphones are light. So if I put it on my boom arm, I'm afraid it'll probably start leaning or tilting in this video. So, um, but what I was going to say was that, um, during my, like, when I started to look at the specs of the Blue Yeti, one of the things that kind of did, did, you know, kind of took me about, took me about surprise, well, not a surprise, but I was kind of shocked, is that they still use 16-bit, which I guess isn't really a big deal. But, I mean, being that they were using 16-bit when the, when the mic first came out in 2009, I thought maybe they would have went up to 24. But, again, I guess it's not a really big deal because um, when you go from 16 to 24-bit, um, the, si the file sizes also almost more than double. So I guess in that sense, well, if we keep it a 16 bit, you can't really hear the difference in the audio quality. Um, and so, you know, why that people or have people dealing with bigger file sizes is the only thing I could think of. I could be wrong. That's just my guess. Now, when I think about the initial quality of the microphone, it sounds good. You know, I, I will admit that it sounds good. Initially, when I, when I approached this video, I was actually going to approach it from a biased standpoint because I've watched tons of uh, Blue Yeti microphone reviews on YouTube. And one of the things that I will say is that um, I realize now that because I've watched reviews where people in the audio field just break down the Blue Yeti and um, say, you know, how it's not really a good microphone. Um, and you, of course, you read the comments and you, you'll see people going back and forth with them. It is. And I think that one of the things that I've learned is that when you're a profession or expert in a field, I mean, you know, uh, you know, audio engineer, um, which is what I have my background in. I started, I started editing, sorry, mixing and mastering music that I, from there I went to podcast and from there now I'm doing, um, YouTube videos when it comes to audio quality or audio microphones. I think that when you're an expert in a field, you tend to look at it differently than someone who's just a consumer or a content creator. I learned that years ago when I was, you know, when my wife first started her YouTube, her YouTube page is that oftentimes I would approach things from a different standpoint than she would. Her mindset was, well, can I plug it up, use it, and, and can, I, can I hear myself talk, you know, if I play back? Yes. Okay, then. You know, she didn't care about the fact that it was a condenser or a dynamic microphone. Those are things that I cared about because of the, the, um, my music background and my audio background that I had. So oftentimes, one of the things that I, I learned from that is that, yes, 
those YouTube videos, I find myself watching them for hours because I'm an audio geek. Anything audio, monitors, analog, mixers, audio interfaces, I find myself watching those for hours. But sometimes I feel like people like myself, when you're an expert in a field, you tend to overcomplicate it for a consumer. Even when I people have asked me um, over the years, um, friends and family, hey, I want to start you know content creation, or I want to start a podcast with you know with no video, just audio. What microphones should I get? And even then, I, I look back now and be like, I think they think about how I overcomplicated it for them, and they're like, well, look, listen, man, I just want to know. I mean, plug 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 the microphone into my computer or um, mixer or you know audio interface, whatever, whatever, and can I use it? And does it sound good? The answer to that is yes. So oftentimes when I watched different YouTube videos on the Blue Yeti or even myself, how I thought about it, because every, everyone that watches my channel know that I'm not really a big fan of condenser microphones. Um, I'll, get that, I'll get more to that later. Oftentimes when you're an expert in the field, you tend to overcomplicate things for people that just want to buy it and just use it out of the box. And I've been guilty of that myself. So for me, the Blue Yeti, it does sound good. It's it's definitely uh it's a bit heavy. <laughs> it's, a, it's very heavy. My arms start to get tired. I I see now that it's, it's steady dropping. <laughs> My arms get tired. It's dropping, so it's cool. But um, I just wanted to kind of see how it sounds as I as I as I talk. I hope you're listening to how it sounds. Uh, maybe I'll do a comparison to one of my other microphones um soon in in the future. But for now, I just kind of wanted to just discuss the things that I just I, I just discussed. You know, it's um I think when it comes to microphones or um even brands or anything, people seem to be loyal to brands. I don't think they care if it's like a condenser or dynamic or twenty four bit, sixteen bit. People don't really care. What they care about is if I Hook it up, cut it on. Can I use it? Is the audio clear? Yes. Now, I'll go back to what I was saying earlier about why I tend not to um, lean more towards condenser microphones. Hey, don't mind me if I start to drop the microphone as I'm talking because <laughs> boy, get a little heavy. I had to take a little break. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> what I'll say is that I tend to lean more towards dynamic microphones. As I've stated in the past, behind me right here, it's a partition. It's um, this is my my wife's um lounge. We have a sectional couch, and a sixty a sixty five inch TV right there behind us. So I got this big partition up, so you don't see the TV and the couch. But oftentimes, when I've been recording, um, when I've been doing YouTube reviews or I do a YouTube review, my kids were would um, you know, walk by or ask me a question, and sometimes, a lot well, a lot of times. I might say, hold on and continue on my point um, on the on the YouTube video and have to cut out the, the part where I paused, but they could be talking right behind me while I'm talking right now. They're, they're, they're not here right now. So I'm saying in, in past videos, I could be talking like right now and they'll be talking behind me, not loud, but you can't hear them because I'm using a, I'm using a, a, a dynamic microphone. Like I said before, well, or oh, oh, at that time, right now I'm using the Blue Yeti. At that time, I was using the dynamic microphone, and you can't hear them because the um, sensitivity note level on on the uh, dynamic microphones are not as as sensitive as condenser microphones, so you really can't hear them. That's why I personally prefer dynamic microphones because I know one, I'm not in an environment where I can control um, the noise level in in my room. Right beside me, right here, my um, I have a I have a I have a um humidifier um in, in my basement it's going it's loud i can hear it my point is that's why i um choose dynamic microphones i know that i can't control the noise level in the room that i'm in i have kids that are home usually they're upstairs um playing when i'm recording these youtube um reviews and they're boom boom bam boom boom bam and if you know, I felt like if I was to use um a digital microphone, you can maybe hear them. Again, maybe that's just my own bias, or because of this being in a in the past, have been in a a recording studio background or environment. So I tend not to um like those kind of microphones. Now, if I'm in an environment where you know I, in the past I've done spoken word or 
I've dealt with certain artists is, oh yes, I love condenser microphones. I prefer them in that kind of environment. So for me, that's why I don't, well, I prefer well, I prefer not to use condenser microphones um, while doing um, reviews, product reviews. Will that change? Maybe it will, you know? Now what I will say is that you could actually argue now that everything I said is actually irrelevant. And I say that because now most modern video editing softwares or OBS, which is what I'm using to record this video on, they all have something called noise suppression. Even on um, video calls like Zoom and Google Meets, they have they have a noise suppression um, plugin. So you can say, well, Dale, you could actually just put on noise suppression and you'll be right. But oftentimes, like I said before, the way that we view things, uh, meaning people in general, is just from our background and our expertise. Does that make it that that mean that it's right at that particular uh, point in time? No, we're just used to what we do and we're content with that. It's like my wife is my wife is in the hair field, cosmetologist. Oftentimes, when she she see a, a, she'll see a wig and be like, "Oh man, that's busted," and she's not saying it to be um, derogatory or to be to be malicious. She's saying from her expertise, whoever did the wig or whoever, um, you know, did the, uh, that specific hairstyle, they didn't do a very good job because her eyes look at things differently than the way that I do. And I, in the past, I'm like, well, babe, it, it looks good to me. And over the years, as we've had conversations, you just come to the conclusion that I just did um, about microphones. Because she's in that field, her eyes are trained to see things that my eyes are not trained to see. I'm a consumer. I just think it looks nice. The hairstyles look nice and yada, 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 and the end of it. She's actually trained to put weaves together from scratch and to do certain hairstyles and to spend hours doing, um, um, weaving people dreadlocks and people hair. So from her perspective, it's different, you know? And so I think that what I've learned over the years is that people who have expertise in certain fields, you have to really learn to bring whatever knowledge that you have of a thing, especially if you're doing it on the, on, on the scale of a YouTube or anything like that, you have to just bring it down to the level of the people that are consuming the content because nine times out of 10, 10, they don't care about this spec and that spec and it sounds good and you can treat the room and you can't treat the room or it, it, it's less sensitive. They, they, they don't care. They can give me a microphone that works. I can plug it in. I can use a, I can use a noise su suppression plug in, yada, yada, yada. Keep it pushing. So, my opinion of the Blue Yeti actually has changed. Um, even as I have paused certain segments of the video and listened to the playback to make sure the audio quality is good and it's not picking up too much background noises, I will say I'm I'm impressed with the Blue Yeti. You know, I'm, I'm really impressed with it. Will I use it again in the future? Uh, probably. Yeah, probably. You know. But because um, I will say that um, because I am, me and my wife do, do e-commerce, probably will post it online for sale and see how much it goes for. So if you don't see it, um, you know, don't, you know, don't, you know, don't, don't let that bother you. I was actually had my eye on another microphone. It's about hundred something bucks retail, but um, I seen that somebody had it on um, Facebook marketplace for like 25 bucks. And um, there was another one. Uh, it was also, I seen the same microphone on eBay for like 27, 30 bucks. So I, I'm the kind of person like, if I know something's uh, um, will, if I know something is expensive or something you know is uh, ha has a higher retail cost, and I can get it for cheaper, I'll do that for two reasons. One, I can get it, see how it sounds, because I'm into that kind of stuff. Like I said I'm an audio geek. That's what I do. Um, I have one, two, three, four, five microphones in my studio or my lounge right now. I have two two different Zeo Sound condenser microphones. I have microphone right here that I'm reviewing, the, the Blue Yeti. Then I have another dynamic microphone right here. I have another one on my shelf over there. Two dynamic microphones in my lounge, and I have three um, conditioner microphones. I'm a, I'm an audio junkie, geek. But I'm also in the e-commerce. So when I find that I no longer use it, I get it, post it online, and I'll sell it. So for me, it's a double whammy because I get to review audio gear, which which is my passion, even before me doing YouTube videos, that's my passion. And then I get to sell it 
um, and make money off of it, make more than what I paid for off of it. So it's a profit. So again, just to conclude this video, the Blue Yeti, if I was to ask myself or ask you guys, who is it for? I think it's for anybody who likes how it looks. They're familiar with the brand. They know they make good product. They were recently, uh, well, I like recently, but they were bought out by Logitech. That's why in the intro I said the Logitech Blue Yeti, they were bought by Logitech, which is a pretty well-known company. They make good products, so I, I wouldn't have any problems with there. But upon doing my research about the Blue Yeti, I, I, I had found that Logitech hadn't really done any improvement to the Blue Yeti, as everybody suspects. So since they since they acquired it, it's just kind of just been continuing, you know, having the prices kind of the same or coming out with different mics, but nothing's really changed. It is kind of rotten what 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 the previous company Blue Blue Yeti built to kind of rotten that rotten that money train. So but for that, it is what it is. You know, decent mic. Audio quality is good. Um it, it's great, you know. Even 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 when I listen back to the audio from the Blue Yeti. It doesn't really pick up too much background noises. Maybe that's because I have the uh, the volume low. But it's a good microphone. You know, if you want to know, should you buy it? Yeah, you know, definitely go out and, and buy it. Like I said before, if you're in an area where you can't control the noise, you can easily use a noise suppression. If you're somebody and you're like, well, I don't want to have to use a noise suppression. If you're somebody that you just want to be able to get you a webcam or Use the webcam on your laptop or, or or your Chromebook. Hook up a microphone and just use it. And you're like, I don't want anything that's gonna pick up any background noises. Well, I would say get you a dynamic microphone. If you if you're familiar with different softwares and know how to add basic plugins like that, get the Blue Yeti. Real quick, um, I realized that the uh the video I did the Blue Yeti review it's over, it's ended, but I did want to do something real quick. In the link below. I left a link of um, an artist um, years years ago. It was like 2015, 2014. I recorded um, a, a live a live album, and um, what I did was at the time I did something that's probably unconventional. I used a condenser microphone in a live environment, and I purposefully did that because I wanted to capture the the crowd noises and the artists. And so I'm going to leave a link to that song in the description. I want you to check it out. And I said that because it's it's really irrelevant to the video, but it's relevant in the sense that I did something that's unconventional. Usually in live sound performances, artists use dynamic microphones. They rarely ever use condenser microphones. So I did something that was unconventional. But I did that because at the time I wanted to be creative and I wanted to capture the crowd and her singing over um o o over the crowd and, and and the vocals so I'll leave a link to that in the description below check it out I hope you enjoy it she's a she's a she's a um beautiful artist with a beautiful voice her name is Heather Longbine um I'm not sure if she has any music out I know years ago when I was talking to her she said that she was thinking about it but I'm not sure if she does but this is one song that I captured of her again what I did was very unconventional because you don't use condenser microphones in live environments because of that reason alone. They're very sensitive. They'll pick up everything in the room. But in this instance, I, I did something unconventional on purpose because I wanted to capture the, um, the, the crowd and her singing. So you'll see it. It's a beautiful song. You know? So again, there are from any indie reviews. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a lot. I put a lot of work into these videos. Thank you for watching. Um, peace.